Hello, and welcome to a special edition of the New Orleans Humanist Perspective. My name is Charlotte Clausen, President of the Board for NOSHA, the New Orleans Secular Humanist Association, which is the sponsor of this program. This episode will be a re-airing of an interview we did in 2016 with Harry Greenberger, our President Emeritus of NOSHA and the creator and longtime host of this program. Harry passed away in early May after a brief illness, so it was an honor that we were able to welcome him as a guest one time after he'd spent so many years in this chair as the host. I wanted to share a statement made by his longtime friend, Marshall Harris, from a recent NOSHA monthly program that sums up so much of what made us love Harry and count him as one of the best people we will ever know. Marshall said, Harry had accomplished many things in his 90 years, but ultimately it was NOSHA, the New Orleans Secular Humanist Association, that gave him great joy in his life. He told me many times how he had always wanted to create an organization where people who felt alone in their thinking could come together to feel a part of something that would keep them from that loneliness. He wanted non-believers to have a place where they could be around like-minded people and could share and discuss their thoughts and views freely without judgment or ridicule. For me, this is what made Harry a great person who deserves our unending gratitude for providing us with NOSHA as an organization and the New Orleans Humanist Perspective this very show. We hope you enjoy this program, and we thank you for your continued support, and please remember Harry Greenberger fondly. Perspective presented by the New Orleans Secular Humanist Association. Following are a few principles of humanism. We're committed to the use of science and reason for understanding the universe and for solving human problems. We're skeptical of untested claims of knowledge, but we're open to new ideas. We are concerned with securing justice and fairness in society and in ending intolerance and discrimination. We are committed to the total separation of religion and government. We affirm humanism as a realistic alternative to the theologies of despair and the ideologies of violence. We reject the concept of an afterlife and believe in living a full and rewarding life here and now. We value and respect each individual's right to judge and lead their lives according to their own position as long as it's respectful of other people living in a free society. We hope you enjoy today's program and others in the weeks to follow. Hello, and welcome to another edition of the New Orleans Humanist Perspective. My name is Charlotte Clausen. President of NOSHA, the New Orleans Secular Humanist Association, the sponsor of this program, and I will be your host for today's show. Let me tell you a little bit about my guest. Uh, Harry Greenberger has a BA in accounting and an MA in uh, psychology. He has served on boards or held office in New Orleans chapter of Louisiana CPAs, the French Quarter Business Association, the Alliance for Good Government, the Business and Professional Toastmasters Club, the Alliance for Affordable Energy, Louisiana Retailers Association, and the Greater New Orleans Casino Development Association. Over the years, he has addressed local Unitarian churches, the Godless American March in Washington, D.C., and the Citywide Remembrance, Renewal, and Rebirth, a local Katrina anniversary event. Most importantly, Uh, And the reason he is here is he has served as president of NOSHA for 15 years and was the host of the uh, NOAA TV show, The New Orleans Humanist Perspective, for 15 years until this past June, which is why I'm delighted to have him as our guest. And uh, I think this is a first uh, for you to be sitting on the guest side instead of in the hot seat here. So you don't know how happy I am that you are sitting in that chair. (laughs) Yes. I can imagine. Well, I, I I realized that that was it was unique, and it, we didn't want to let uh, you know let that go. You need to, you need to be be the guest. So, um, 
I, I thought uh, uh, since uh, you've always talked to all of us about NOSHA, uh, perhaps we could uh, start with that, uh, talking about the uh, history or, or what you think is the most important thing to You'd start like with. like to know how I became involved with NOSHA. Yes, why don't you tell us? Well, that? it goes like this, and it was, you know, some quite a number of years back. A, a woman who had small children uh, living in New Orleans, and she wanted to know if there was a, a humanist organization in the city because she, she, uh, she and her husband were non-believers and they, uh, uh, you know, wanted an atmosphere where their children could grow up. She contacted the Humanist Association and um, they said, no, we do not have an entity in New Orleans, but you can start one. They sent her a packet of materials how you could start a humanist organization. And then they sent out invitations to all the people who subscribed to their, to their magazine to come to a meeting. And this meeting was at a, a, a library, a major library out on Veterans Highway, and I would say there were 12 to 15 people there. None of us knew the others. So we sat around, each one talked, you know, said who he was and what his interest was in humanism. And, you know, mm -hmm. we, we got to know each other, but we were all really strangers. Well, the, the documents that were sent to this woman uh, told, told you how to get an organization started. And they said, uh, the first thing you have to do is to uh, select a president. Mm -hmm. And the woman who had brought us all together, she said, well, I want the organization, but I do not want to run it. Mm -hmm. And so we had been there for I don't know how long and got, you know, knew something about each other. And the man sitting next to me poked and he said, how about this man? <laughs> <laughs> me. And I said, well, if anyone would like to be president, it's yours, but if no one will take it, I will. All right, <laughs> that's how I got started with the organization. Now I'm not sure whether somehow or other the word got to the Times Picayune about our organization, and they sent out a reporter to my house uh, uh, and a photographer <laughs> and did a half-page story about the atheist group in in New Orleans. Oh my. Uh, which didn't matter to, you know, it didn't matter. I was retired from work. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I never made much about being an atheist while I was employed and, you know, a member of a lot of organizations mm -hmm. because some people don't like us. Mm -hmm. But anyway, there was this major, a very friendly article with, you know, this picture. Uh, and I think that that was where our first new members came from because we just started with like 12 or 15 people. Mm -hmm. uh, so, and I know at least one of our board members said that's how I knew about you when I read in the Times Picayune. Ah. But anyway, starting from that level, through these years, we now have a, a, a list of people who have. Uh, who have contacted us and said, put my name on your mailing list mm -hmm. of over 600, is that right? Oh, yes, over well, it's, it's. I mean, we, we have probably uh, over like seven or 800 who are associated uh, with us in various things, so it could be uh, as many as 1,000 right. people. So that's a long way from the dozen or 15 that started it. That is true. Now, I don't know where these new people keep coming from, but but... People still call me up, and they're interested, oh. and, and I don't know, they may be contacting you, but our numbers still grow. That's right. Yes, I had someone uh, contact me from Mississippi and uh, uh, has heard about us, and, and so it's interesting when people, even at a long distance, are looking for that connection. Yes, well, so. when you mentioned Mississippi, we, when we, we, we had to get a charter, we got, you know, and mm -hmm. I applied for a nonprofit status mm -hmm. with the state of Louisiana and, I, and, and got the, uh, the uh, IRS uh, exemption, 401c3, so, you know, we're, we're a nonprofit organization. Uh, 
but uh, so we we uh, we were officially organized, mm-hmm. and um, so that was that was the the beginning. Now through the years, uh, and we had to have a board of directors. Mm-hmm. All right, so our original board of directors from that long ago is almost still intact. Right. Almost all still intact. And I will say this, during my tenure as president, I could not have asked for a better board of directors. Oh, well that's... Now, I had someone who had been the president of a national atheist organization who was here as a speaker who came and Mm -hmm. addressed our organization. Mm -hmm. And she said to me, but at that point, she had been fired by the, her board of directors. Mm. Yes, I'm and familiar with that And she said to me, story. Harry, watch out for your board of directors. <laughs> I have not had that problem. No. I don't think you're going to have the problem I, either. I don't think we've, we've had so that kind of problem. And so that is problem. sort of my, my history with mm-hmm. NOSHA. Mm-hmm. Yes, uh, it has been a, a pretty consistent um, and and fairly um, stable uh, organization, which I I think I mean going now that we're in our seventeenth year, there are a lot of organizations that I think hit certain levels of maturity that just don't have that kind of stability. Is in fact, the 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 woman I talked to you about who came, who had been the president of a national atheist group. Mm-hmm. Uh, and came down and addressed us and was very impressed. And she said, most local atheist groups don't last this long. That is very you know, true. That, and in fact, in, in New Orleans, there had been prior attempts to set up local organizations, mm-hmm. and none of them survived. Oh, yeah. Well, it is a testament. I think, uh, I mean, I think hitting 15 was a milestone. And so that, Absolutely. you know, two years later, we're still perking along. And, of course, have expand uh, have expanded our, our programs and things that we offer. I mean, having this TV show uh, is, I think, uh, quite an amazing thing. And it's uh, consistency. I Would you, you like want, to talk you want about to know some... how we came to have a TV yes, show? Yes, please. Well, the American Atheist Association made uh, television programs, uh, and they and I was a member, you know, and they were looking for someone to get their programs on local public access television stations. Okay. So I came over here to this station to see what we had to do to get the American Atheist TV program on here. Mm-hmm. Well. This is a good organization here. Mm -hmm. Uh, In order to be a member, uh, you have to be a resident of Orleans Parish. Mm -hmm. And if you want your organization, a nonprofit organization, to be a member, you have to, your uh, your domicile has to be Orleans Parish. So I came over here to uh, see what I had to do to get the American Atheist programs on the air. I got the application blank that I needed to do that. Mm-hmm. While I was here, I found out they were they had local programs. Mm-hmm. I didn't know that. Mm-hmm. And I said, you mean we could have a show of our own? And they said, well, fill out an application. They said, we have many applications. Fill one out. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and so that's how, and we were accepted. And so that's how this program came about and that was you know some years ago right that- but i can tell you uh i have in, enjoyed being the host of this tv show and i have had obviously over 15 years i have had and doing you know two two guests a, a oh, month yes 24 a year 15 years i had a lot of shows and a lot of guests and I enjoyed that. I enjoyed having guests, as you're going to, after you get through with me, you're going to have other guests. You're going to, sure. You will enjoy having guests. Yes. So it, that's sort of uh, how this this um, television program came about. Well, and it, it is um, uh, quite amazing because I know as a... Uh, a, a secular humanist organization. There's so many issues that I think we can uh, support 
uh, culturally and just societally uh, in uh, things that, that reflect our values as humanists, yeah. which I think is something that perhaps uh, maybe we don't even push that enough as far as, you know, talking about the programs we have well, as as yeah. our uh, reflecting our values in, in, in our community. And I think that's a, a major plus. Well, one the of show. the principles of humanism is that we were supposed to live life fully and, and, you know, and enjoyably and get the most out of mm -hmm. it so long as we don't hurt anybody in doing it. Right. So guests, which I frequently had on my show, were people who in some way, personally or with their organization, contributed to a good life for mm -hmm. who people who, you know, who had who uh, could get advantage of what they were doing. Mm -hmm. I would have people, you know, who, who were doing things that, that we could enjoy, people mm -hmm. in theater and, and, and such, yeah. because one of our principles is live a good, you know, fully rewarding life. Mm -hmm because it's the only one we're going to have. That's right. That is right. And and I do think that um, uh, as as we do continue doing the, the show and trying to maybe expand even the way we uh, what we want to talk about, because I know we try to be we try to support the New Orleans area, uh, but maybe we could you know even talk about um, uh, I, I think one thing I definitely did want to, to bring up uh, since we are here and this is our program is uh, what do you see as the future of non-belief and atheism uh, here and nationally because we are right. facing a, a kind of a, well, a change in, in our society. I am, here. I am both hopeful and pessimistic. <laughs> uh, I see a great movement of in in Europe and in this country of people away from organized religion mm -hmm. and in Europe particularly you know they've shut down churches and cathedrals and, mm -hmm. uh, and um, we haven't we, we haven't we're not that mature in the United States yet but but uh, and it's particularly on the east and west coast. Mm -hmm. There, uh, there, uh, there are just a lot of people who have just walked away from from their churches. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, my attitude has been, you know, as as a, a leader of our of our group, uh, that uh, it that I don't I, I, I'm not offended by people who are religious. I'm offended by the religious leaders and the churches whose objective is to is to get money, out, squeeze money out of people mm -hmm. right. and to just to perpetuate themselves. Right. But if a person, you know, is, is sincerely religious, I don't try to take that away from them. Well, and, and I think that that is something that a lot of people are very concerned about, maybe, that people uh, think that that's what our goal is. And what's fascinating to me is religion, like so much of, of who we are, is, is private. I mean, our, our thoughts and our motivations and our desires and our needs really stem from individual you know, beliefs and values. And, and I think yeah. a lot of people should feel stronger about that whether you're a non-believer or whether you're religious a religious person should have yes. you know should should realize it really is their private belief it is now not everyone who goes to church on sunday or friday or saturday mm -hmm believes in God. <laughs> Probably not. For many of them, it's a social thing, uh, you know, mm -hmm. being among people, of, you know, of the, whom they, whom they, they like. And, right. It may be a business matter, you know, especially in the synagogue. Mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> you, or, or even, you can make yeah. a lot of business connection. Uh, so the people who, who uh, go to church aren't necessarily believers. That is true. That is true. There, there's a lot of uh, social benefit, which Absolutely, I think yes. uh, organizations like NOSHA uh, definitely uh, contribute to that. Because I, I do believe that many of our community uh, who are members uh, who regularly come to things, I really believe it is an extension of, of their, you know, their uh, their family, so to speak. That they've met they've met friends who have become part of their family, part of their. Uh, 
you know situation uh, every day and every or every week, every month that they're seeing these people. Mm-hmm. And I think that's something that we sometimes don't realize that that's an important thing we provide. As you know, we had a couple that got married who met at no show. I <laughs> would bet that, aware yes. Of that. Oh, yes. And so that's... <laughs> it's, the, that's you know, it yeah. is. It, uh, I consider, you know, those, those monthly meetings that we have that we're all family, you know? Mm-hmm. Right. And we may yeah. not all like the same things, and if we have a speaker, some people may like what he says, and some people may not like what the speaker says, but but we have something in common. Yes. Now, I am uh, concerned that, well, number one, Louisiana and New Orleans are not the most fertile ground for uh, for atheists. You know, Probably. you go on the West Coast and the East Coast, the, the, you got a lot of non-believers mm-hmm. there. Here, we've got Catholics and Baptists. Mm-hmm. And for whatever reason, it's kind of hard to break for them to break away. Mm-hmm. Uh, but uh, so, you know, we don't try to take that away from them. Right, right. Oh, yeah. And in fact, I, I think that, that that is something that maybe we probably should address more as an organization that that it would be reassuring to people to, to say that what we're trying to do is we're trying to live our lives and believe, you know, believe a certain way. Um, and we're affording everyone that opportunity. And so many people don't really see that in what we believe or, or do. I am uh, I'm surprised that we really don't have even more people coming around to want to be part of our group. And I occasionally have gotten calls from someone who would say, I thought I was the only one. Mm-hmm. It can Still. be a lonely life if you live in it with a religious family mm-hmm. and you, and you uh, work in a place where everybody's going to church and, mm-hmm. and you can't even talk about it. It right. can be a very lonely life. Yes, I, I agree. And I, I do think that we are so very, I guess to use the word blessed, we are very blessed that we have what we have here. I think we are in competition with a, a very culturally active uh, place and so it's it's we're kind of having to fit our programs into that yeah. for people but but I do think there are people out there in small cities and towns across the country and they do not have access to this either they yeah. don't have us you yeah. know there or they they don't have the opportunity to organize because there are few of them and it is quite scary and I I sometimes think that we forget that those people are out there and it's and we wish we could reach reach out even if we can't so be in their town when you said that we are blessed. Yes. Who is blessing us? I think we're. I think for me, it's just. I think we're lucky. Blessed. Oh, well, okay. it's always well, I understand lucky. luck. Yes, That's yes. what I didn't understand was blessing. I know. Yes. Yes. I. But for some reason, the word blessed really does fit for that. Okay. <laughs> um, so yeah, I, I do think Nosha. Um, I. I I, th- I think we offer a connection that people probably would miss otherwise because they need, you know, it's having a place to go where you belong is a huge, I mean, they've based TV shows on that, <laughs> where everybody knows your name, yes. you know. Yes. Uh, and I think that's one of the pluses of, of And I think show. many of the people whom we see at our monthly meetings uh, socialize outside of our meetings. That is very true, uh, definitely. Which you know they they have people with like like minds mm-hmm. and enjoy their company. Yeah, yeah, and I I think that that's something that uh, um, maybe people get so busy and New Orleans has so many things to offer from you know Mardi Gras cruise and and festivals and all of these different things that people enjoy doing, and sometimes I worry that we can't fit in anymore, you know. But but then again, yeah. uh, I think. Certainly, especially now politically, I think NOSHA and groups like NOSHA have to, you know, we, we, we represent a, uh, a different type of, of thought uh, out there. And it kind of worries me that some things might get, you know, a little bit tougher for us, like separation of church and state and, and things like that. Well, that, of course, the separation of church and state has been a major issue with us. Mm-hmm. That is one of our topics. Uh, we have frequently worked with the ACLU. Uh, b- because Louisiana public schools are full of religious practices, mm-hmm. it's you know that they've just they've, they've got they've got their hands full, 
and so we, I do appreciate what, what they're doing mm-hmm. because that it, it uh, w- when they do take action, then the pra- the religion in the public school ends in that school, mm-hmm. but across the state. They just can't get to all of them. Mm-hmm. Right, right, and and I I think that 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 in of itself is is one of our biggest uh, I I don't want to say fights, but it feels like it is one of the 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 biggest things that we should really be working on more. And I I certainly always try to encourage uh, the secular people in in our organization. Um, to 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 understand what government is and how they fit in it, I yes. think a lot of people don't. I think it's in some ways kind of intimidating, and it can be scary. Well, we do support the concept of getting religion out of government. Mm-hmm. Now you do know that the um, New Orleans City Council has a, a an inv- invocation, mm-hmm. a prayer. They yes. have a. They have a, 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 a you know a, a, a preacher who does that at all of their meetings, mm-hmm. which is unconstitutional actually, but they have cordially allowed me to do uh, to do the opening uh, uh, event in a non-religious way. Mm-hmm. And I have done that over the years like seven times. I have done the invocation at the New Orleans City Council. And I want you to know that they have been appreciative. The first time I did it, a couple of them left their seats and came over to thank me for doing Mm -hmm. it. And so when I when I requested, uh, you know, to to uh, come do the invocation, I, I was always accepted, mm-hmm. and I hope that NOSHA will continue to send people to the city council and go- other government agencies that have invocations. Yes, that would be something that would be so nice if more people could do that. I I, I feel like that would would certainly s- at least send a message that it is a diverse community, and I think a lot of people forget that because they're they're very much in in their mm-hmm. own you know mindset and and so I've always wanted more people to do that I I just I have been so busy with NOSHA stuff that I have never had a chance to really think about adding one more thing well, the first life. time or two that I did it it made the time speak you uh-huh so you know we just need to keep ourselves in front of the public uh-huh because there are people who never heard of us right. in this city. Most of the people never heard of us, and the more yes. we can make ourselves public, the, the more the more people may want to just say, "Well, look, I, I'm going to look into that." One thing I did want to say was that your uh, one of your invocations has uh, been. Uh, part of a compilation of um, invocations that one of the national organizations put together. Like it would take parts of quite a few. And I remember thinking how moving that was because it was like fitting everyone's speech together. And and it was so nice. We should try to find that again. People in NOSHA, you should get some more people to do invocations. And if they go into the Internet, they can find a hundred examples. I know. And you can borrow from here and there and there. Nobody's going to care if you use some of their words. Mm-hmm. That's right. And and it's not just the city council. How about the Jefferson Parish? You know what about? I know. Yes, it could Saint be. St. Tammany. Yes, it could be any community. Okay, well, yeah, Charlotte, really, yeah. you, yeah. See that, you see that somebody does that. I'm go- I, I should try to make that my one, you know, my one thing for for the next few months to see if one person, you know, who uh, would like to, you know, maybe make a statement like that and just see if we could get that done. I don't know. It'll be it'd be a fascinating test. We need well, to run that experiment. We'll we really give it do. a shot. Now, one thing that you all, you and other and other board members have done that that I uh, I am not electronically literate. Mm-hmm. And you all have a lot of things going, mm-hmm. having to do with the whole new world order uh, that I, you know, I never was able, I never pr- produced such a thing because right. I'm not, I'm really electronically illiterate, but you've got some good stuff going. We uh, have really used social media to our advantage. I I do, gl- I'm glad you brought that up. That'll probably be our last thing we could mention here that, okay. um, that 
Facebook and other things have really worked to our advantage, and we're even doing ads on Facebook, which was something we started this past year, okay. and it, is, it has brought in more people. We have been very successful with that. Well. And, you know, having a, a really good website that we, you know, are so lucky to have. Um, uh, so, yes, I, I, I agree. We have definitely uh, tried to step our game up using social media. So I want to know, are you enjoying your presidency? Well, it's been <laughs> tough, um, and I guess that's a good place to end. Yeah. That's, that's all we have time for today. But thank you for joining us, and we hope you will tune in again very soon. Thank you, Harry. Thank you, Sean.